So we're outside underneath some shade trees, and I wanted to show you how the standby magneto works on a 2025. And this car is my 2025. Um, now you'll see 20 horsepowers have a very similar arrangement, but they may have an earlier design magneto. And then there's even some very early 20 horsepowers that had a dual ignition that had its own separate Watford magneto and it would have two spark plugs per cylinder unlike the later ones in the 2025s which only have one spark plug per cylinder so we're, we're not talking about that we're only talking about the standby magneto that you would find on a 20 horsepower or, or a 2025 so anyway this device is, is really quite a clever thing so if you had an ignition problem, and that problem would be something within the coil, ballast resistor, wiring, or even a battery issue, you can switch over to your magneto and that will power the engine and be able to keep you moving along. Uh, you may not have lights if you did have a battery failure, but again, you can keep moving and, uh, and that's very important. So I just wanted to show you how that works. <clears throat> so now, over the years, there's probably a lot of cars that never had their Magneto um, operational or was ever in operation. People probably just didn't think that it was important to, um, to ever use it or they never had an emergency to use it. So you may be lucky and you may be one of those people and you may have a Magneto that's really in splendid shape. Or you may have someone who abused it or didn't use it correctly and then and it's uh, not in good shape at all or it got corrosion inside of it or some other type of problem and and then that's a whole nother issue and and if that's the case of course it would need to be rebuilt um, I use Mark's Magneto and uh, don't confuse him there's another Mark's Magneto but don't confuse the two the Mark's Magneto I like is in Connecticut and he does quite a wonderful job with all magnetos and um, and I, I just can't say enough about his work so and I'm also going to show that you can find a lot of the information that we're talking about and also how to operate your magneto in your owner's handbook so you know, it tells you it's the RW1 Watford Magneto. It shows you where it is. And also on the Magneto, you'll see that it has a little plate on there, and that's an instruction plate. So that can be helpful as well. So, um,. Let me give you a closer look at this device. You'll see that it has one wire. And so that one wire feeds spark over to the distributor. And so to dis you still need to have your ignition rotor and distributor cap. So I always suggest to people to carry a spare ignition rotor because they can burn through. You can actually get a spark that goes down through the rotor, down through that Bakelite rotor, and to the uh, post and short out. And that can be a very difficult thing to diagnose. So um, keep that in mind. Carry a spare rotor. And you also have another wire here. And that wire is to switch the magneto off. So when you turn your ignition switch to the off position that grounds out the points so that it will not develop a spark and it'll shut your engine off now a lot of people confuse that wire with a power wire and they'll put power to the magneto and that's a bad thing to do because that will almost surely instantly destroy your magneto or at least make it so you have to send it to mark for a rebuild so now, the, the armature to Magneto is, has a lot of very fine windings, 
and also has um, other windings that are thicker but those very fine windings are about as thick as a human hair so you have to be very careful with using the magneto correctly otherwise you can burn those out and then your magneto is uh, again going to marks for rebuild so you want to be sure that your magneto has a point of discharge um, if it's in operation and normally there's a safety gap inside the magneto so that if it does develop a spark and the spark doesn't have anywhere to go instead of burning out the armature it'll arc out on that safety gap so always make sure that that's in good order so now to start off if you decide you want to switch over to your magneto ignition you'll notice that on the connecting shaft here is this little button and when you push it down you pull back a little bit you push it down and you rotate the shaft a bit and then it will find what we'll call a master key so you basically have a gear arrangement and on that gear you have one uh, one indexable tooth and so we just engaged it in to that tooth and, and you can tell because now it's connected solidly to the back of the dynamo so that means your magneto is engaged if it's not engaged you'll be able to rotate that and you don't want to do that and the reason for doing that is so that it's in time with the engine <clears throat> So now, after we engage the magneto, we double check our connections, make sure everything's good there. Then we. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the engine, and what we do is we switch these plugs. So this is the wire coming from the magneto. We now insert that into the distributor cap and then we put our coil wire plug in its parking position there to keep it from getting uh, bouncing around or anything else and please excuse my modern coil I was just uh, doing some coil testing and and sometimes uh, things get switched around so now we have these plugs switched and then we come to our fuse box we take our fuse box cover off. And we extract the number three fuse. It's this one, it has blue wires going to it if it's wired or correctly so we remove that fuse and then that disables the distributor ignition so that uh, um, your coil if it was working or wanted to work or anything else isn't going to burn up or spark around or anything else and we also have a nice and convenient holding spot for our fuse is right in here um, a lot of people sometimes carry a spare fuse um, in that holder so if that's the case then you can pull the one take the one you pulled out and put it in your glove box or your pocket or something for next time and then we put our cover back in place Now we are ready to start and drive just as we normally would um, if we were on battery ignition.
So we turn our ignition on just as we normally do. Give it a little bit of throttle. In the case of my Magneto, I have it timed to where it likes to run a little bit more advanced. Then we press the starter button. And it starts up. It accelerates nicely. And it's ready to run, ready to go down the road again. Now it's not uncommon for a lot of magnetos to run a little bit differently than when it ran when it was on the battery uh, distributor ignition. So it might have just a tiny bit less power. It might not be quite as smooth. Um, so just be ready for that. But you should be able to drive along just as you were driving when you were on your battery ignition. So now we're going to switch back over to battery. So we'll shut it down. Always shut down by your throttle and then turn off your ignition. So then we retrace our steps. We remove our fuse panel cover. We reinsert our number three fuse. Get our cover back in place. Then we switch our high tension connections back again. So we then come to the other side and we disengage the drive of the magneto. So we just simply pull it back and then this latch will keep it from being engaged and you, you can tell because you can rotate it by hand. Then you're disengaged. Make sure that's disengaged. It's very important. And then you start the engine and you're back on your battery ignition. So now we're running back on our battery ignition. And uh, there's another thing I wanted to show you. I wanted to show the cycling of the AutoVac. We're gonna have a video on AutoVacs at some point. I thought this would be something interesting to add in. So your AutoVac uses vacuum from the intake manifold and when it cycles which it should be doing here shortly it will make the idle stumble a little bit and you also hear the auto vac make sort of a sneezing noise and that's how you know it's working properly because basically what it's doing is it's taking a gulp of gasoline it's filling up the inner inner chamber when the inner chamber gets full, the float comes up and then it pivots the valves and it releases the vacuum for a moment and um, lets the gas in that inner chamber drop down into the main chamber. So again, hopefully it'll be cycling here soon so you can hear it. Some cars, you don't even hear the autovac cycling. Um, but then there's other ones where it's a little bit, there it goes. 
So you notice there was a change in idle and then you heard the sneeze and then went back to where it was. So that's a perfectly sound autovac um, cycle. But it throws a lot of people off because they think there's something wrong with the engine because well, it shouldn't be missing like that suddenly and then, and then go away. So we'll give it another minute here and see if it wants to do it again. Ghost. 